Hello everyone and welcome to the channel, it's the Eradicator and in this video we'll be talking about the C2 Hercules which is available in Star Citizen of 3.13.1 which is in the PTU servers right now and oh boy how much fun am I having with the C2 Hercules, it is flying like a charm, it looks wonderful, it has its pros and cons of course but this is not what this video is going to be about, in this video we will talk about trading because with a whopping 696 SU of cargo capacity the C2 Hercules is now the new king of trading and so does it make now trade finally profitable we'll be talking about this in this video but before we do that guys i want to talk about this month's ex exceptional well not exceptional this month giveaways on the channel where i'm giving away 75 dollars in rsi gift cards to you guys the subscribers of this channel all you have to do is to subscribe to this channel and answer the giveaway related question i'll be asking throughout the video this is for 25 dollars and a bonus of 50 dollars if you subscribe to my new channel the eradicators which is where i talk about about lots of stuff that is non-statism related. Thank you so much to everyone out there. Also, for the people who subscribe to me on Patreon or via the join button membership, you guys have access to my Discord where I'm giving away another Tumblr Cyclone MT with LTI. All right, guys, let's talk about the C2 Hercules and how good is it now when it comes to trading? Well, that's what we'll be seeing right here. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the speed of the C2 Hercules, which again is flying as I had expected. This ship is extremely aerodynamics. Remember, let's remember that it was built on Planet Crusader, which is a gas giant, and that's the very reason why the Crusader decided to manufacture this ship on a gas giant, was to make sure that they go as aerodynamically as possible because of the thick atmosphere here so they are designed to go fast and go from one place to another as fast as possible just like for example the mercury star runner and here the c2 hercules is doing the job very well now in space it is not the fastest ship obviously although it is quite fast for this type of vehicle right it goes at 962 meters per second but in atmosphere i was able to have some really fantastic performance either on Corp or also at, uh, at Hurston as well and also on a couple of moons like Lyria for example. Now the first question that everybody's gonna have here is is trading fixed in 3.13.1 and I'm afraid that it's going to be no. First I went to Stan to Edmund sorry which is a trading outpost right next to Lorville and the trading terminals were completely bugged. I was not able to buy anything but it was related to that particular trading outpost. I went to other places where I was able to buy aluminum at uh, I don't know, it was at Stanhope which is another one on the Hurston but unfortunately I had a 30k error so I was not able to sell that particular hole and that means I had uh, to take another C2 Hercules. This time I went to Lyria to sell two, and I was able to buy a couple of different materials here: some titanium, a little bit of diamonds, and some chlorine as well. And I was able to make a very decent profit with that hole here. All 696 SCU of cargo capacity were full, and I made a profit of about 42,000 Alpha UEC, which is definitely nice, especially given the short amount of time it took me to fly from one place to another and this is where I think that the City of Hercules really shines. You see, I always say that in Star Citizen, the amount of money that you make is not necessarily the most important. What's important is the amount of money that you make per hour, which means that you have to be as time effective as possible if you want to get rich in this game. And that was one of the main drawbacks that I've had with some of the bigger cargo ships that were available in the verse before the Starfarer and also the Caterpillar is that those ships are not designed to fly in atmosphere. Those ships are designed to fly in space. And so when you're going to the main trade hubs like Lorville or Area 18, for example, then you are wasting a lot of time traveling from orbit all the way down to the surface. Sometimes you get slowed down to sluggish speeds of 100 or 150 meters per second, which just takes your approach uh, very slowly and it just makes it taking forever to go to the hangar. With the C2 Hercules, this is a completely different ball game. I was able to reach speeds that I was never able to reach with these other ships that I mentioned before, all the way to 400 plus meters per second from orbit down to Lorvel, which is really fast. The approach was much faster than I had expected. The same was also true when I went to Area 18. It took me a very short amount of time to reach to my destination. And as a result, this is why I believe 
believe that, prof that trading here is going to be much more profitable because you will be spending less time going in and out. Same with taking off here, leaving the hangers, going back to that mark of 10,000 meters so that you can get in quantum, in quantum drive, right? It is also much faster too. It's, I wouldn't say it's the blink of an eye, but uh, it's basically on par with so what some of the smaller ships like the Cutlass are capable of doing, which I think speaks volume for a ship of this size. Now let's talk about the size of the C2 Hercules as well. Well, it fits just right in the hangars or the rest stops. I mean, obviously it's better to have them with the VTOLs on because I don't think that with the wings you are going to be able to be very comfortable fitting in. But with the VTOLs on, it removes a little bit of that extra width here. So that should be okay. But when we go to the actual pads of the of the outpost on, for example, any of the moons of the Stenson system or even on Hurston as well, right? Well, I'm, I was very surprised to see that with enough care you can actually I mean I think that you can easily put two C2 Hercules on some of the biggest pads and that is actually a very good thing especially if you are trading in groups let's say you have a couple of C2 Hercules that you want to land at the same place and you don't want to take all the pads because you want to be maybe leaving other pads for other people or some of your escort fighters perhaps then that you should have extra comfortable space here instead of landing your C2 Hercules on some kind of rock which would then make maybe be the ship inaccessible because the the elevator would not be able to reach the land the the ground right so this is another good point here now of course not everything is positive there are a couple of drawbacks that i found for example the quantum drive is extremely slow to turn on and I think that's because of the great C industrial component so we're gonna have to upgrade this to hopefully be on par with the Caterpillar. The Caterpillar is much faster to spool the Quantum Drive. I also thought that the traveling in Quantum Drive itself is also very slow perhaps because of the pointure of the base component so uh, for example taking uh, traveling from uh, from uh, area 18 was on uh, from our corp all the way to Hurston took me uh, quite a long time I was not able to calculate exactly how long because I fell victim to a crash to desktop in the middle so that did not really help but overall it was definitely much slower than what it would have taken me with a caterpillar but I guess it's one of the drawbacks right because they don't want to make all the ships perfect obviously so they need to find ways to make uh, the ship a little bit not as good as the other counterpart from Drake and this is perhaps the CIG's way of balancing things, things a little bit but again this can be countered I believe by purchasing better components. And last but not least, I think that the ship is also extremely dangerous if you fly it solo. Now, this is a ship that is supposed to be flown by two, and you are going to understand why as we leave the ship here via the elevator. And unfortunately, the elevator is not raising uh, on itself. People say, oh, but you need to go a little bit further away. Yes, but anyone can get on the on your elevator and get inside the ship and become a stowaway and eventually hijack your ship as you are flying it away. So if you are flying it solo, this makes this ship extremely dangerous and you have to make sure that no one is here when you are training there. There are no ships around, no vehicles. And perhaps if you are training solo, this is maybe going to force you to go to more backwater outposts. We know outposts which are featuring uh, some commodities that are less popular like I mentioned earlier you know aluminum or maybe corundum you know those kind of or chlorine maybe those kind of low tier commodities that are not going to attract pirates that are going to try to hijack your ship but if you try to go to best deck uh, or late on area which is where you can buy lots of titanium and maybe laranite as well for sure this is going to be a magnet for all kinds of outposts who are going to try to take advantage of that flow so if you are flying solo here you really have have to take that under consideration and that's pretty much it here for this uh, review of uh, the c2 hercules when it comes to training but here comes the giveaway question guys what do you guys think is the biggest flaw of the c2 hercules let me know in the comment section down below all right guys well that's all for this video tomorrow we have a live stream another live stream will be extensively testing the c2 hercules on twitch so if you have not followed me on twitch the link is in the description down below i'll see you guys tomorrow for more content on the channel this is the eradicator i'll see you guys later
This video is brought to you by the people who support this channel on Patreon and via the join button as well. Supporters of the channel get access to lots of cool perks such as access to my private Discord, your question answered in the show, you get to know when I'm going to play, and also you get to have a chance to influence the editorial line of the channel. Any help is appreciated, starts as just a dollar a month. Thank you very much for watching. This is the Radicator, and I'll see you guys later.